Hello. So, in the la last lecture, we discussed about uh, viscous flow past a spherical drop, uh, but if you recall, we have assumed that the surface tension is a constant. So, in that case, we had a ambient flow and then uh, flow uh, is uh, driven by uh, this ambient flow and you have a spherical drop. So, now we consider that surface tension depends on some activity say in this example depends on the temperature. So, in which case you have uh, ambient flow plus an additional activity due to the surface tension variation. Hence, the corresponding uh, tangential stress balance uh, play a role. Okay. So, let us uh, have a look at this. If you consider the surface tension, it may depend on any physical quantity like temperature or concentration and it is uh, uh, proven that typically in a linearized approximation, surface tension depends on uh, temperature or concentration linearly like this, where alpha is constant, beta is constant and T is the temperature. Okay. So, such effects where surface tension varies with temperature or concentration and the corresponding gradient induces tangential force. So, that is called a Marangoni effect. Okay. So, the, uh, the applications of uh, various uh, drops and bubbles uh, under Marangoni effects uh, are enormous, uh, because in most of the liquid propelling systems, uh, you have uh, high temperatures and you have a uh, lot of uh, bubbles and drops are formed. So, therefore, the migration of those under such environment uh, is uh, very much uh, essential to understand. Okay. So, today we are going to discuss where uh, with the assumption that surface tension depends linearly on the temperature okay. and uh, additional assumptions flow is steady, incompressible and viscous, axisymmetric, two fluids are immiscible where we have a liquid drop of viscosity mu i in a fluid of viscosity mu e. Interfacial tension depends on the temperature and uh, steady conduction is considered. When we are assuming interfacial tension depends on temperature, so there should be the corresponding uh, temperature problem. So, here steady conduction is considered. So, we will spend a uh, uh, few minutes on, uh, on this uh, okay, before we solve the problem. So, the scenario is as follows, you have a drop this is similar to the, uh, the ambient uh, flow case. You have an ambient flow at far field. In addition, if you see, you have an ambient temperature and you have uh, the corresponding temperature interior that is T i and corresponding temperature exterior T e. Okay. So, hence due to the additional consideration of uh, temperature, we expect that surface tension depends on the temperature and uh, hence the migration of the drop should be influenced. So, our aim is to consider what would be the corresponding influence of this uh, temperature considerations. Okay. So, to quickly recall the boundary conditions are uh, the normal velocities are 0 and then the tangential velocity continuity and uh, the corresponding tangential stress is balanced by surface gradient of the surface tension. Okay. So, in this case we assume that sigma is function of uh, temperature. In the last lecture we considered sigma is a constant. Okay. So, that is a major difference. So, we go for Stokes equations interior and exterior. So, this is very straightforward uh, similar to the previous uh, lecture. Addition is we are considering steady heat conduction. Okay. So, before we come to the heat conduction equation, so we have a drop, then what we are saying you have a uniform far field and then you have a far field temperature. So, this is so when we have the fluid case, we are using the corresponding governing equations, which are nothing but balance of linear momentum and conservation of mass that is what we have used. Okay. So, that is we are using
for both exterior and interior we are using. So, this is conservation of mass and linear momentum balance. Now, once we have additional temperature naturally the concept of energy comes in. So, one has to consider the corresponding energy balance, because you have a temperature set in. So, uh, you get the corresponding energy transmission takes place. So, one has to consider the corresponding energy balance. Okay. So, now if you consider the Fourier law of conduction. So, we have typically uh, this is the corresponding thermal conductivity and then this is the temperature gradient. Then the flux, flux will be, so this is and if assume k is constant we get uh, okay, times k. Okay. So, this is the conduction flux and then by virtue of the total material transportation the change of temperature with respect to the convection is this. Now, if we assume there are some sources or sinks say you have some q which is a function of t. So, now if we balance what we get is So, this is the basic energy balance. Okay. Now, for the present case we are assuming steady conduction that means, okay. so we are ignoring convection and uh, the flow is steady and there are no sources and sinks. So, this is the simplest uh, scenario. Hence, we have Laplacians with respect to temperature both exterior and interior. So, once we have the corresponding uh, steady heat conduction, we need the corresponding boundary conditions on the interface. So, the natural boundary conditions are continuity of the temperature and uh, continuity of the corresponding flux, where kappa is uh, the corresponding ratio of uh, thermal conductivities. Okay. So, now uh, we are assuming uh, axisymmetric flow, therefore, uh, you are seeing only r theta dependency. So, there is no phi dependency and hence we have to get a separable solution of Laplacian in a only axisymmetry case and we have uh, uh, the corresponding boundedness condition and far field. So, we are keeping uh, the case very simple with the assumption that you have a far field uh, ambient temperature given uh, as r cos theta, it is a uniform uh, you can say uniform temperature. Okay. So, now for axisymmetric case the solution for the Laplacian uh, for interior and exterior can be written down very easily. So, you can see the coefficients uh, uh, for exterior we are using this and for interior with primes and these are the Legendre polynomials. Okay. Now, we have to determine these coefficients by using the boundedness condition in the interior, far field condition for the exterior and uh, matching the corresponding temperature and flux. Okay. So, if we apply the far field condition, so we obtain, so this uh, may be we can uh, discuss uh, a bit. So, we have T e which is uh, So, this is P n of cos theta, this should go like r cos theta. Okay. So, n equals to 0 you get 1 over r. So, as r goes to 0, r goes to infinity, so this term anyway is going to vanish, okay. because from n equal to 0 onwards you are getting 1 over r terms, n equal to 1, 1 over r square. So, as r goes to infinity this goes to 0. So, n equal to 0 just a constant. Okay. So, we are 
considering n equal to 1 case which is r p 1 which is exactly this. So, therefore, if you match what we are getting is a 1 equals to 1 and a n is 0 for all n not equals to 1. Okay. So, a 0 is uh, still you can have, but a constant uh, is not contributing. So, we can absorb in, in T. Then the reduced uh, temperature external is given by this. Strictly speaking, we could have added a constant, but that can be absorbed. So, there is no functional dependency with respect to r and theta in the constant. Okay. Now, for the interior uh, finiteness condition B n prime is 0, because if you see from n equal to 0 onwards, this produces singularity at r equal to 0. So, since we are assuming no source and sink, so B n prime must be 0 that is what we have written. Hence, the reduced uh, temperature field interior is this. So, at this stage we are left with two arbitrary constants B n and A n prime and we have two conditions given by continuity of temperature, continuity of the flux. So, we enforce these conditions. So, first condition if you enforce continuity of uh, temperature, we get this relation. Then if you enforce continuity of uh, flux, we get this. If you see we are indicating uh, n equal to 1 case explicitly, because this is the non-homogeneous system which is going to give a non-trivial solution. If you see for the remaining uh, for n non not equal to 1 case, you have a homogeneous system which produces a trivial solution. This is because of the ambient uniform flow. Had it been uh, some other flow, you would have got uh, the corresponding modes. Okay. For example, uh, let us say your flow is say some cos 2 theta, then correspondingly uh, n equal to 2 would have contributed. Since uh, we are having n equal to 1, so n equal to 1 mode only contributing, the remaining modes are 0. Okay. So, this is this will give, so I have listed the homogeneous system will produce trivial solution then the non homogeneous system corresponding to n equal to 1 produces uh, the corresponding solution. So, this is very easy to check. Okay. So, once we have uh, the solution at hand, we have the complete uh, field. So, this is exterior and interior and uh, naturally this is in terms of the corresponding ratio of the thermal conductivities. Okay. So, now we have uh, the solution at hand. The scenario is exactly similar to what we have done for the uh, for the constant surface tension case. Just we have to balance the forces, okay? Balance the boundary conditions. But additionally, when we are balancing the tangential stress, we have to consider the gradient of the temperature. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So since we have uh, axis symmetry, so we have the corresponding uh, stream function. So, since we have done it, so I am not spending much uh, on this, because it is uh, almost a third time we are recalling. And the boundary conditions, so these are pretty much straightforward. The notable one is jump in the tangential stresses, where you get this is due to the surface gradient of the surface tension. Okay. And uh, a non dimensionalization has been taken place because we have uh, the right hand side we have a sigma dot t and here we have uh, uh, the corresponding tau e minus tau i this but our assumption is sigma is alpha minus beta t. Okay. So, we non dimensionalize this, once we non dimensionalize uh, we get a non dimensional number you can see here we are getting the corresponding non dimensional number which is called Marangoni number. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, the competition between uh, the corresponding uh, uh, 
conduction that is the temperature to the corresponding uh, convection. Okay. So, this is the uh, temperature gradient. Now, the additional condition this is interior flow is bounded and far field condition. Okay. So, we are exactly in the same scenario as the previous uh, uh, case of uh, viscous flow pass rate drop. Additional thing is the temperature will uh, keep you the corresponding stresses with a jump okay. and the jump is quantified as gradient of the temperature. Okay. So, let us see how the corresponding uh, jump is playing a role. So, as before this is the general solution for n equal to 1 case, then uh, applying far field these arguments we have very much uh, discussed. So, similar arguments applying far field uh, we get this, then we consider the corresponding uh, uh, stress balance we are not doing. Okay. So, we consider these conditions u r 0 that will give you a theta derivative okay, and u theta is continuous. So, this is normal exterior 0, normal velocity uh, interior this should be i and this is a jump I put it as a jump. So, which is nothing but uh, so this can be written as So, this is a jump. Okay. Many times uh, this notation is used. So, that is what we are using. So, leaving the stress balance, we have used the remaining 3 and then determine 3 coefficients in terms of one of the coefficients that is B 1, because we had in the solution 4 coefficients. So, using 3 boundary conditions, we determine in terms of one of the coefficients. Okay. Now, we are left with uh, the stress balance. Okay. So, in order to compute the stress balance, what is required is this operator. Okay. So, let me explain a bit here. So, we have stream function exterior is and of course, we have a u by 2 then stream function interior is now we compute on each of them why because we need to compute the tangential stress so for this we have to compute this and then compute this i'm just sketching uh, some process okay so that you feel confident so this if you do what we get so u by 2 sin theta because sin theta is cancelling one then the de derivative of that and for for this same thing we do okay then if you look at uh, the next step we need is 1 over r square sin theta. So, and for this Okay. Then the next we need partial derivative with respect to, okay. so we are doing so this will be R cube. And here R square 
or d 2. Then final we have to multiply. So, this if you call some star we need r star. So, that will be then here ok. So, once we have computed let us say this is A, this is B. If you pay attention what we need is A minus mu times B is this ok. Now, we have this temperature ok T i. So, what we are going to compute the stress balance. So, essentially we are looking for we are looking for A minus mu b equals m a ok and we are on r equals to a. So, this is on r equals to a or normalized r equals to 1 ok and we have t is continuous on r equals to a and we have a theta derivative. So, therefore, what exactly we are using is because the structure of T i is very simple. So, we compute from here exactly the same. So, now what is T i? T i is So, therefore, ok. So, we have a functional dependence of sin theta on the right hand side and a and b if you see we have a functional dependency of sin theta. So, simply we have to consider the coefficients and r is a. So, we do that. So, once we do that we are going to get the following. So, u by 2 ok, I hope you are following u by 2. So, sin theta I am ignoring and we are on r equals to a. So, therefore, I am also not considering r 4 a 1 minus 2 b 1 minus 2 minus mu times b. So, that will be then and this is equals because our condition is m a times this. Therefore, ok, we are on r equals to a. So, now we, we are ready to determine the coefficient. So, let us take this u by 2 to the right hand side ok. So, we are taking a by 2 to the right hand side. So, for a 1, but we have the relation please look at the relation that we have obtained a 1 is this c 2 is this d 2 is this. So, we are going to use it. So, u by 2 anyway we have taken the other side. So, 4 a 1. So, that will be because a 1 is minus b 1 plus minus ok. So, then minus 2 b 1 minus mu c 2, c 2 also we have a relation ok. So, we are using this. So, please use it you can get it quickly this will be 2 b 1 plus 3 for d 2 also we are using the relation equals 
and u by 2 we have taken other side therefore, 2 by u. Okay. So, now this and this, this is minus 6 b 1 and uh, this and this minus 6. Similarly, here So, this is now we can take 6 b 1 common. So, minus 6 b 1 1 plus mu then we can take uh, here we can take uh, minus 3 common. Okay. This is equals to so from here we can get So, from here we can get. Now, in case if the surface tension is constant, so then we take m a equal to 0. So, then we get uh, the corresponding coefficient which is nothing but the, the clean drop in the in the sense where you have only continuity of the tangential stresses case. So, otherwise if you expect that surface tension depends on temperature, so then the corresponding Marangoni number and the ratio of the uh, thermal conductivities play a role. So, with this we have determined uh, B 1. So, once we have determined B 1, we have determined the, uh, the all the coefficients. So, then a drag can be calculated of course, uh, this uh, again requires lot of algebra to compute normal stress. Okay. P has to be computed and then normal stress, tangential stress, then the drag is computed. Okay. So, once we have the drag what uh, uh, we consider is one can compute the corresponding uh, thermocapillary drift. What do you mean by that? The force acting due to the hydrodynamic plus thermocapillary. So, that is reflected if you see your drag force. This is due to the hydrodynamic drag and this is due to the thermocapillary effects. Okay. So, called Marangoni effects are also called thermocapillary effects because C T involves uh, M A and uh, thermal conductivity. If uh, your surface tension is constant, then M A is 0. So, there is no thermocapillary drift, only hydrodynamic drift. Okay. Further, if you see, if you take uh, mu goes to infinity, then you get a 6 pi mu u A that is a Stokes drag. So, all limiting cases that is the reason uh, in the uh, previous lecture we did not discuss drag because once you discuss drag here, you can get the drag for simple viscous flow past a uh, liquid sphere, because simply take m a equal to 0, you get uh, the corresponding drag. Okay. Migration velocity, when the flow is steady, we find migration velocity in the absence of gravity forces by equating the net forces to be 0, that is what I have indicated. So, therefore, we equate the net forces to be 0 and uh, compute the migration velocity. Okay. So, this is um, of course, I uh, have used as a scalar. So, this is um, it should not have been there or this is may be treated as vector. So, this is the corresponding migration velocity. Okay. So, I hope uh, this gives uh, some modeling approach for droplets and in particular not only clean droplets where your surface tension is driven by some surface activity. So, here we mentioned that the activity is due to the temperature, but uh, in general it could be due to various types of surface activity. It could be due to some surf surfactant which is coated on the droplet, it could be due to some electric potential etcetera. So, the corresponding literature is uh, very much available and uh, with this uh, introduction I am sure you will be in a position to follow that. Thank you.